Today we're going to start with some golf movie trivia. Can you name the host of the Waterbury Open? Oh god, I love it! I've never seen anybody <laughs> that hit that ball half as far as you can. Why, it's Riverway Golf Course in Burnaby, Canada. And be sure to subscribe to the channel, not just for golf movie trivia, but to watch a guy who, like Happy, has an unconventional golf swing and gets his way around the course. Today we're playing the blue tees at about 6,500 yards, and the first swing of the day is a good one, about 260 down the middle, and it will leave me with just a short iron in. And today we're also going to do something a bit different, and rather than talk through each and every shot, I thought it would be useful to step back and compare this round that doesn't have the greatest of scores to my last couple of rounds where I scored in the mid-70s. There's going to be a lot of holes with straightforward pars like this, and some today are going to be a bit different, and I thought it would be useful to examine why. Picking things up on the second hole here, I chunk pulled an 8 iron, and even though it's going to find the green, it's going to put me in the heart of 3 putt territory. And after the first green scared me with its speed, the second one was quite a bit slower, at least it was in my mind. And we're going to have to take a 3 putt bogey. But in the scheme of things, the odd 3 putt bogey isn't going to absolutely kill a round. Can you take a guess what will? No, it's not shabby ball striking like this heeled forward here that winds up in a bunker. And it's not necessarily bad play inside 100 yards, although that can certainly be a culprit as well. It's not missing little tap-ins like this either. Instead, I would argue that most of my bad rounds start with bad course management, like my next shot here. That forward out of the bunker catches a lip, and that shot is going to directly cost me strokes, along with this one here. And a very wise player once said that strokes gained is a stat best left for guys on the PGA Tour. For the rest of us, strokes lost is a much more important thing to look at. So that's going to be the theme of the video today, as soon as we get this triple bogey out of the way. Even on the par 5 here, I hit a pretty lousy drive, but you know what? Thinking of it as a 3-shotter, it's not necessarily going to cost us. And I'm able to bunt a 4-wood back into play here, and actually give myself a pretty good look at birdie. It's not quite meant to be, but that's a decent way to get momentum going after that disastrous last hole. Speaking of that, a birdie would really help our cause. And we find one. Seven is stroke hole one on the card here, and I do hit the right shot off the tee, but here's a strokes lost shot. As though I wasn't content enough to lose strokes with that shot, this one is also going to cost me strokes. I put it into a terrible spot, and the only option from that hill is to get it on the green. But two horrendous shots on this hole lead to a triple bogey, our second of the front nine. And it's hard to recover from a day with multiple triples on the card. And speaking of bad course management, look at the trajectory on that hybrid, and notice what I do with hybrids like that throughout the day. I hit a 5 yard push draw with every single hybrid I hit today, but I never learned to adjust my target, and on multiple occasions I missed greens to the left. Nine is another hole that calls for a wood off the tee, and good course management off the tee was followed by a lousy shot here, and there's yet another one that's going to cost me strokes. My head's probably spinning a bit at this point and we're going to have to walk away from the front nine with a double bogey on nine, going six over in the final three holes for a very disappointing 45. Like I said, most of these errors aren't necessarily errors of technique, but more errors of course management and bad decision making that led to bad shots that directly cost us strokes. One thing that is certainly within my control, however, is my mentality. And stepping on to 10, I told myself to forget the front 9 and see what I could string together in the back. And you'll see that the back 9 wasn't perfect, but I definitely prevented this round from tumbling into a disastrous round, like my recent third round at the Vancouver Open. 
first couple of holes here are pretty straightforward. Hitting fairways, hitting greens, and doing the one thing I seem to do well day to day, which is lag putt. But here comes a shot that will cost us strokes. This one winds up directly next to a tree where I have to take an unplayable. And I hack my way out, but I'm now trying to down for bogey from about 100 yards. That's certainly not something we're going to do every time. And after that putt from off the green, this turns into preserve double instead of triple? One thing my friend Nash pointed out in a video earlier is that the scorecard really doesn't discriminate whatsoever between a putt for triple and a putt for birdie. So it's worth taking your time on every one of them. On the par 5 here, I had some fun and hit driver driver before a somewhat disappointing wedge into the green. But in any event, I do manage to escape with the par. 14 is a really demanding hole. There's only about one place to place your tee shot unless you're a bomber who can drive the green with about a 300 carry. But there is another error in course management. You can see the flag waving there, and my approach shot had at least a one club wind into my face that I totally forgot to account for. And guess what? It leads to a bogey. This shot was downwind, and the 8-iron I thought would be great, but it comes up just a hair short. But staying focused, I do manage to make an up and down here. The driver began failing me a bit down the stretch here. And it would be interesting for me to try to assess, honestly, whether that last shot was an error in course management. I put it into a pretty bad spot, and I'm unable to get up and down. I do escape with a bogey here, but it's possible that wedge wedge might have been the better setup, because certainly double bogey was in play. Here's that push draw with the hybrid again. I haven't learned and wind up in a greenside bunker to the left. And this is a reasonably decent bunker shot. But I'm unable to convert on the up and down. The smother hook seemed to be coming back a bit with driver. But you'll see that like the earlier par 5, a bad drive can still set you up for a par as long as you don't do anything too stupid. All in all, we are going to scramble for par here. And the back 941 is an improvement from the front 945. And I hope this video was interesting food for thought. Because I find myself talking to a lot of people who seem to think that the difference between breaking 100 or 90 or 80 is all a matter of technique. And while technique is obviously important, I think that mentality on the course and course management that can prevent you from making big numbers is just as important as technique learned on the range.